I wanted to do it this way because I think a lot of people think that I just have guests on that I've known forever and ever. Yeah. Right. But I wanted to show the audience that literally we just met. I sent you a message on LinkedIn and said, I want to have you on my podcast. Yeah. Come in. Yeah. We just sat down and we're just going to record this. Yeah. Cool. Right. So that's how we're going to do this. Um, so I'll do a quick intro right to this camera. Don't let that fool you. Okay. That's the only time I look at the camera until the end. Right. Okay. So hey everybody, this is Josh Feedy. I'm your host. Welcome to the Founders Mentality. I have uh, a guest on today that I think everybody's going to be able to learn a lot of things about. Um, there's a couple of similarities that me and this guest have that, that I don't know if he even really knows yet because we, we literally met through LinkedIn, just a quick conversation, uh, and now he's in my studio. So uh, real quickly, uh, can you just introduce yourself and tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yep. Yeah, so my name's Kyle Hale, and I guess most recently what people might recognize is I was the COO and partner at Bite Squad, yep. the restaurant delivery service that started in Minneapolis in 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And what are you doing right now? So I, I just left Bite Squad in well, really the last day of October. Okay. And so I, t I took a little bit of time off. Um, we went to La Jolla yeah. in San Diego. Nice. Spent some time there, my wife and I, and then we were down in Naples to visit my folks. Okay. And I, I kind of had the idea that I was going to take like maybe up to a year off. Yeah. And then I just like <laughs> phantom found myself like make, finding consulting deals yeah. with, with different companies. So I have... Yeah. Four different companies I'm working with right now. Okay. Um, kind of kind of a gamut. So I have a, a, a large privately held company that wants to develop a new mobile app yep. off of one of their old kind of legacy desktop products. Right. right. And they've just they're not used to doing that for consumers or even you know kind of direct to direct to customer. Right. So I'm going to help them build that MVP and kind of you know get all those features and functionalities squared away into tickets and just kind of take them through that process. Right. And then um, I'm working with Range Digital locally. Do you know okay. John Goodman from I Range? Don't. No. So Range managed all of Byte Squad's uh, media budget, new user acquisition. Okay. And they also um, structured a lot of our data ar architecture as it relates to customer journey. So working okay. with Segment IO and all of our events that sent from the Byte Squad app into into Segment that kind of informed our our you know uh, media media buying and a bunch of other stuff so okay very cool so we work together very closely and i really respect john so i'm working with him yeah. uh, about 10 hours a week yeah and then there's a group developing some ghost kitchens in town okay which is kind of a hot thing on the coast what is a ghost kitchen so so basically built off the back of the restaurant delivery service industry yeah is that you know the the take rate that restaurants have to pay the economics for them are a little more challenging when they have like front of the house and they've got servers and everything else so okay. it's basically they can launch a concept by basically just building out a commissary okay. in kind of undesirable real estate so you're just building a kitchen yeah no front of the house and you know from there you can develop five to ten concepts out yeah. of that kitchen okay and just test and try and your unit economics are just going to be stronger that's really cool i didn't i didn't know there was a word for that there's actually going to be a space in the building i work in um that is going to have a rotating group of four new restaurants every single six months cool right so it's just going to be uh chefs that have an idea for a restaurant concept yep. right this is kind of their mvp to try that out Okay. Right? See if people actually come and every six months you're out, right? You don't yeah. have to buy the equipment. You don't have to staff the front of the house. You don't have to do any of that. It's a cool concept. It is. Okay. And there's also um, Travis, who is the former founder and CEO of Uber. Okay. He just raised like $400 million to go and build these kitchens out. Okay. So That's it's a decent amount of money. It's kind of on the, it's kind of big on the coast. There, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of people doing it. Um, in Minnesota or the Midwest, right? Which is kind of what happens. Like any tech company I've been a part of, it's like right. the concepts are hot on the coast. Right. Minneapolis gets ignored. <laughs> yeah. Yet it's a great place to kind of start this, uh, that same concept. Yeah. Because we fly under the radar here. Right. And so yeah. I think there's some good opportunity there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's never a bad idea to steal ideas and concepts from the coast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, there's you know a lot of people talk about there's more money in the coast. It's easier to fundraise on the coast. Whatever. Maybe that's the reason that more things start like that out there. I think also though, if you're talking about restaurants, there's just more more money in yeah. those areas, yeah. right? And there's plenty of money in Minnesota as well. There's plenty of people that love to go fine dining. Um, but I mean, the coast has always been big on food, yeah. right? And people are willing to spend for that. So, and okay, so your background though lends itself beautifully mm -hmm. to that. Um, before we get into that, so here we go. A couple of quick similarities between you and I. Okay. You graduated one year after I did from Minnetonka. Okay. I'm an Eden Prairie guy. Okay. So we probably ran into each other yeah. at certain things. So yeah. small world. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, uh, looking at your uh, background, I can tell you're a sales and marketing nerd like me. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
Yeah. I love talking to other people that just geek out over sales and marketing, right? So we'll probably end up talking about that a little bit here too. Cool. Um, I'm a huge foodie, so I want to learn more about you know what you're doing in that space as well. Yeah. But I think um, one of the things that'll be interesting to any of the people listening to this show, I mean, you were a part of uh, Bite Squad. There was a lot of things that happened with that company, and then they were acquired what two years ago now? Uh, just in January of 2019, actually. So okay, not so even I have my ago. facts completely off on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. So that was acquired recently. You yep. were with them at the time of acquisition. Yep. What was it like working with an organization like that, building a company like that to the point where it was acquired? What was that whole experience like? What can you tell us? It, I mean, it feels like it happened really fast. I mean, just to kind of give the origin story, yeah. if, if that's cool. I'd so, love to. So we had a daily deal business called CrowdCut. Mm -hmm. So this is like 2012 when Groupon's getting hot. Yeah. And so we grew that business to about a million dollar in revenue per month just in Minneapolis. Wow. So, yeah. um, and kind of as daily deal evolved where daily deals were getting saturated and then we moved into product. So yeah. now I'm sourcing products from all over the world and traveling to all these product trade shows and now yeah. we're selling product and kind of like the Groupon Goods function did. Yeah. Um, but along the way, like that business kind of continued to deteriorate. Okay. And we said, like, what else can we do? We've got this huge, we had a half a million subscribers in Minnesota. Yeah. So it's kind of the adage of like, just sell something new to your existing customer base. Right. And so we, we said, you know what? Restaurant deals sell out super, super fast. Mm -hmm. So c customers like them. Yep. The restaurants themselves, it's kind of a love hate, you know, because they're discounting their brand 50% off. Right. And the loyalty programs back then weren't really that dialed in to kind of get the return guest data. Okay. I think either. So, okay. so they kind of love to hate it. They love the cash flow piece of it. And yeah. It's like, here's a huge check, you know. Um, and so there was a concept called restaurant connection operating here. So this is before. Uh, DoorDash, I don't think was active yet. Grub was and Eat24 was, but okay. Uber Eats wasn't around yet. Okay. Um, so we were relatively early, yeah. you know? And so we said, there's this company doing it here. They're based out of San Diego called Restaurant Connection. They had like 12 restaurants. Yep. The drivers didn't have a like real friendly appearance. The technology wasn't there. Yep. It's not like it is now. It's just kind of table stakes to get tracking and right. text messages and updates. And, yep. you know, so... We said, let's have W2 drivers. Let's yeah. make them wear a uniform, kind of the Geek Squad model. Yeah. Let's have branded vehicles. So we had the Priuses, yeah. which was a great, you know, kind of unique acquisition channel for us just to have those rolling billboards out there, yeah. um, you know, for, for a long time. And so we launched here in August of 2012. Okay. And, you know, it, it kind of sputtered along the first couple of weeks and then traction, traction, traction. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like people are liking this. And right. we use the Daily Deal site to sell deals for half off delivery for Byte Squad. Yeah, okay. So that really seeded our first, call it probably a couple, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000 customers. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we actually sold CrowdCut. I, I was sourcing goods for a competitor in the South who liked our good selection. Yeah. Yep. And so I was basically helping them with their inventory down there and then they were paying us for it. Okay. And then they were bigger than us, so they had then approached us about acquisition. Yeah. So then we sold CrowdCut um, in the fall of 2015. Okay. So I was then kind of at a point where, you know, Bite Squad was launched. You know, we basically got the first 15 restaurants on board just through a wireframe. Like yeah. I, I took my daily deal sales team out and we said, <laughs> here's here's what it's going to look like. Yeah. Are you into this? Yeah. You know? Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, sure. They're like, okay, we'll be back in like 90 days with the product. Right. We'll build it. So then we built it. Um, so we were able to leverage all of our internal resources. Yeah. And then we sold CrowdCut and I was kind of at a point where, you know, we, we weren't the co-founders weren't giving um, equity out for Bite Squad at the time. Okay. So I worked for them and helped yeah. them develop these concepts, but I wasn't yeah. a, an owner at the time. Sure. And I was kind of like, you know, I, I've kind of hit the wall on selling to like local independent businesses like yeah. through the daily deal. And I've sold a deal to every single type of business like in, yeah. in the local space, you know? Yeah. So learned a lot, but I felt like I was kind of hitting a roadblock there. Yeah. And I didn't want to just kind of keep working with local restaurants at that point. Yeah. So I then got a great opportunity to go work with uh, Clay and Tracy over at, at Lead, Lead Pages. Pages. Yep. And so they brought me over as VP of Enterprise Sales. They didn't have, they didn't really have any sales process set up or anything. Clay yeah. just wanted to go into enterprise. So I launched that team, hired six reps, and we built that out. And then we acquired Drip, which is a marketing automation tool. No um, more. Yep. And so really got to learn that space really, really well and kind of got a mini master's in, I would say, like MarTech and marketing and SaaS in general. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, 
along the way, then uh, Keanu and Arash, we stayed in touch, and then they asked me to, to come back, and yeah. they got a, a big round of venture from a company on the East Coast called Bregal Sage Mount, okay. and um, made me a great offer as partner, and Zillow yeah. to come back and finish what we started together. So This time with equity. This time with equity, yeah. Yeah, great. So came back, and it was a blast, and as far as kind of then what it was like, it was you know, very, so I think when I came back, we were around 25 million in GFS. Okay. And, you know, we scaled through up to about 300 once we got acquired. Amazing. So that was like in a two, uh, two year period. Yeah. And it was largely through, so we had, our strategy was really, you know, greenfield markets where there yeah. wasn't an incumbent competitor. Yeah. If there was, they were an independent one that wasn't one of the big, you know, DoorDash or anyone else. Yeah. And they had a little bit of traction, maybe between one to two million, even half a million in, in revenue. Yeah. And we would acquire them. And because those independent restaurant delivery services didn't have like the marketing resources that we did or yeah. the product resources, we were able to onboard their user base yeah. and give them better tech yeah. and put our marketing engine behind it. Yeah. And so those those acquisitions really scaled up really nicely and we'd two, three X them pretty quickly. Wow. Um, and okay. then we started launching organically again, kind of late in 2018. So. There's a ton to unpack there, so I'm going to try to stumble my way back through a bunch of this stuff. Yep. First thing, um, you've been a part of two acquisitions in the last five years of your life, correct? Yep. That's amazing. Um, the first busy business you mentioned, what was it called? Crowd Cut? Crowd Cut, yeah. And was that your business? No, so they, I came on about a month after they started it. Okay. So okay. they they had other e-commerce sites. So they had yeah. e-commerce businesses like PokerChips.com and BunkBeds.com. This is okay. before like Google changed all their algorithms. Algorithms and that got yeah. much harder to do that type of business. Yeah. But they they started the Daily Deal site, kind of seeing that the Groupon space was hot. Okay. I came on about a month afterwards. Okay. And then I was led. I was VP of Sales for them. Yep. Um, yep. And then through that process, then kind of the backstory I just gave. In that business, if I'm allowed to ask this, yep. were you offered equity in that business no, not when in you that came business. on? Yeah, okay. Not in that business. So the first business that you were offered equity into um, was the most recent was the last one that you worked was at. Byte Squad, yep. Was when he came back to Byte Squad. Yeah. Okay. So what I would say to um, and this actually this is a very relatable story for me right now because I just uh, hired um, our new our newest employee just the other day, Jared. He's going to be heading up all of our marketing for the company. I sat him down. He's the first person to join our company that wasn't part of kind of the founding team, mm -hmm. right? So I sat him down and I gave him three options. I said, I can pay you full time at a higher rate mm -hmm. with zero equity, or I can pay you at a much lower rate with more equity, yeah. or we can meet somewhere in the middle where you have some equity. And I told him, I said, look, the, the number one thing that I want to make sure of is if all of our hopes and dreams come true with what we've created here, our hope is that this is this ends in an acquisition. That's mm -hmm. our hope. It's the most logical road for the business that we've created, I think. Yeah. And I want to celebrate that day. I don't want you to walk into the office and not be able to celebrate yeah. because you just lost your job and there's nothing in it for you, mm -hmm. right? Let's all go buy new Porsches together. Let's right, make this right. a fun experience, right? I think that more people... Uh, need to be looking for opportunities in a startup space to be getting that equity, right? Mm -hmm. Would have been great if you would have been able to get it in that first business, mm -hmm. right? I mean, leading them to acquisition, it would have been great to have some equity in that. It's great that you were able to get it in the most recent one though, right? Yep. Because that equity, that is, many of the guests on this show have said the same thing. That's kind of the difference between what's happening in Silicon Valley and what's happening in Minnesota. In Silicon Valley, everybody gets equity. All those businesses are giving out equity to at least that core team that starts building that dream, right? Yeah. And when that sells, when that moves on, they create new businesses because now they have the money to yeah, chase right. their own dreams. We don't have that as much here in Minnesota. Yeah. And, and we need more of that. So that was awesome that they were able to do that, right? And you were able to do mm -hmm. that. Talk to me a little bit about, just because lead pages, that's right in my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. right? Talk to me a little bit about more of the learnings that you had there. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the things that you learned at Lead Pages have translated into your career since then oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, those are some really smart people that launched that business. So, I mean, I've heard nothing but great things about Clay. I've never met him, mm -hmm. but I've heard nothing but great things about him, right? So what, what are some of the learnings that you took away from that? So there, there's kind of two sets of learnings. There's the Lead Pages learnings, yeah. and then there's the Drip learnings. So yeah. there's kind of the landing page conversion piece and then the marketing automation piece. So mm -hmm. the... The landing page piece, all you people talk about there is conversion rate optimization. Yeah. And so in all of the, in the entire funnel. Yeah. So what it does is it just gets you thinking in a framework where everything's in a funnel. Yeah. So like to draw a parallel, when I came back to Byte Squad and I looked at our driver hiring process yeah. and I said, whoa, 
this is this is not mobile friendly. I'm trying to do it from my phone. Yeah. And it's yeah. almost impossible. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know, marketing team, can you use Tag Manager and tell me what percentage of traffic's coming from mobile? Right. Sixty percent. Right. Oh shit! Like, Let's so sixty percent of traffic's coming from there. Yeah. The conversion rate's terribly low. Yeah. So you know, in service level is so important yep. in the food delivery space. And if you don't have enough drivers, you can't you can't hit your service levels. No. You yeah. know, so so that learning was was so translatable, and then to yeah. be able to kind of itemize out all of the steps in the funnel, yeah, and then completely overhaul that, and then two x our applicants conversion rate, right, and our applicants, right, like was huge for us. I mean, yeah, that, that like literally changed focus where we were just so working uh, in the business mm -hmm. because we were always trying to catch up with hiring drivers because our growth was so explosive, right. So it's like a change like that was game changing for us because then I could kind of elevate out of that and then work on the next problem. You always have to be listening to the customer and looking to find those things and be willing to pivot, right? Yep. So um, huge learning. I, I worked with a client once that was in the uh, trucking space, and they were uh, upset that they weren't getting the leads that they needed. Same situation. They mm -hmm. needed more drivers. And I sat down with them and I said, well, you know, your, your site isn't optimized for mobile, right? Well, what does that matter? I said, well... Do the drivers that come to work for you, are they maybe like leaving other gigs where they're currently a driver? Yeah. yeah. Well, are they maybe like sitting and waiting for their truck to get unloaded and thinking they want a better gig? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we should optimize this. Right. So that they can find those jobs. Right. right. Looking for those things is important. I think the other important thing is just, you know, you mentioned this in the background of all the other businesses as well. Um, when you're starting a new uh, business, don't be afraid to start small. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to start with a napkin sketch. Get out there and talk to your potential customers and say, what if, what if, what if we did this? Would you use this? Right. And then once you move past that, what if, and you create that first version, which again, doesn't have to be the best version. It doesn't have to be a completely polished version. Mm -hmm. It just has to be a workable version. Yeah. Right. Now, will you actually use it? And it sounds like that's kind of what you were doing with Byte Squad in the beginning there mm -hmm. was just kind of figuring out, look, here's, here's that first step. Are you actually going to use it? How can we grow this business? Talk about that acquisition strategy because I think there's a lot to unpack in that with Byte Squad, how mm -hmm. you were you know, uh, purchasing those smaller food delivery businesses. That's a really smart angle. Are the other food delivery businesses kind of approaching things that way right now? Not really. Like Grubhub acquired a lot of distressed assets, yeah. Like historically, okay. um, but generally, no. Like that was something that was unique to us, and we did okay. we did forty. So wow. we did forty in two years. Wow. And so that going back to the funnel conversation, that was like, okay, we acquire a business yeah. now. Like I'm executing our growth strategy, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing that it's taken us six months to flip one of those businesses into the Bicequad platform. Yeah. It's like, that's way too long. Yeah. So then you start itemizing out what needs to happen to do it. And right. then you change the process and now, and then we flip them in six weeks. Yeah. You know, so it was really like reducing that time to, to kind of absorption into the marketplace, the Bicequad marketplace. Yeah. So that was, that was huge for us. Cause then we could do more of them faster. Right. So then we, then we accelerated the acquisitions because they yeah. weren't all cash deals. They were right. part equity, part cash. So we were able to do yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. Cause they weren't super cash heavy. So it was Did successful those for us. Did those 40 acquisitions with Byte Squad, did those all happen in those last two years after that big raise near the end? Uh, almost. Most of okay. them. Yeah. Some wow. some prior to that, but most of them were were past that. And then That's incredible. It was crazy. <laughs> it's I mean, a busy it was couple like, years. Yeah, I think what people like <laughs> you're acquiring like two businesses a month or yeah. three months? I mean And we were launching like I I'd, I'd built a framework so that we could also organically launch you know, up to 50 new cities a month if we wow. needed to. Wow. So it was like, how to, and you know, we were undercapitalized compared to our competitors. Yeah. So it was how do we do it at a, at a very low cost? So yeah. we yeah. wouldn't put new infrastructure into a city if we were launching organically as well. So you got right. the acquired strategy and then there's the organic launch strategy, which yeah. is the second piece. And so yeah. we wouldn't get an office space yep. and we changed our whole driver in, driving hiring funnel or mm -hmm. driver hiring funnel so we could basically hire them virtually. Okay. Um, and then you have like one person who kind of does the I-9 document, documentation on the ground there. Yeah. We'd send a road team for a few days and then, you know, get all the restaurants live and move on. So yeah. we were able to launch a city for under, you know, 50K. What I, what I absolutely love about this is that um, to date, all of the, uh, anyone not watching the film, I'm doing air quotes right now, all of the quote unquote uh, founders have been actual founders, have like mm -hmm. started the business themselves to date, yeah. right? You clearly have a very entrepreneurial mindset, though, right? And you were part of founding teams on businesses, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is great. So where does this transition to, first of all, for you? I mean, right now you're working with four different companies, right? Mm -hmm. Mainly consultancy type yep. work right yep. now. 
But do you have a vision of what you want to do next? Is your plan to, you know, start a new company of your own? Are you looking for another company to join as kind of a leadership level and mm -hmm. help them move those that way? What are you looking for next? Yeah, so I think um, I it took me a while to find, I guess, what you'd call like your purpose. Yeah. And for me, I was I was always like pissed off when I was young that I like wasn't an artist. Like you said, you have a background in music, <laughs> yeah. and I wanted to be good at music, and yeah. I want or be a good at drawing it's or not illustrations. All that great, but yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it always like really pissed me off that I wasn't artistic, you know. Mm -hmm. And I always kind of was mad at myself about it. Yeah. But I've learned that like I loved like building and creating. Yeah. And I've learned that you can do that in different ways, and yeah. so. I think what I've really learned about myself is I love the building phase yeah. of companies. So that can come in many different forms. Mm -hmm. Most of the companies I'm helping right now are building. Yeah. Either some from scratch almost and yeah. or or they're like trying to go through the high growth phase right now. Yeah. And that's the part that I love. And that's like I like when things are kind of starting to break a little bit. Like things were on fire when I came back at Bite Squad and I just was so energized by it. And right. so I think um, I don't have a like crystal clear path on exactly what I want to do. I just want to, sure. I just know that I want to build. And yeah. I, I also knew that I didn't want to go right into a full-time role with another company right, right. away. Um, and then I guess the, the other thing I'm working on is my own uh, kids t-shirt e-commerce store. So okay. I, I got a uh, toddler now. He's 19 months. His name yeah. is Sky. Yeah. And already has a business. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Cause why not? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working on that. So I'm, I'm working yeah. on all the t-shirt concept designs and nice. that was like something for me that's just more fun yeah. and to exercise creativity. And yeah. I have a lot of ideas around, cause for me, like the kids t-shirts are actually about the parent yes. more than the kid. Well, absolutely. That kid's not picking yeah. those things out. So yeah. it's like what, like you can, you can reference pop culture without yeah. like infringing upon copyright. Right. And there's all these different things you can do that kind of strike a nerve with parents, I right. think. And yeah. I've just found that like when my toddler's like running around acting like a little psycho through our house. Right. Like if he has a funny shirt on or something yeah. that strikes yeah. me, like it just right. makes the moment easier. Yeah. So I kind of want to leverage that and like, can you like 2X positive interactions with your kids through t-shirts? It's a little more fun to watch a, a child raise hell in your house when they have like the ABCD with the lightning bolt going through it. Shirt, exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 It makes it comical. Yeah. I like that. And I haven't seen anyone like make that kind of the brand purpose of, of their line. Sure. So... I think uh, that's something I'm working on in the background for fun. Yeah. See no, that's goes. awesome. That's awesome. What about, I mean, what about the guys from Bite Squad? What, what are they working on right now? Are you guys staying in contact? Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we went through a hell of a ride together. I mean, we, we worked together for seven years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've got a lot of respect for them and vice versa, I think. So yeah. they're, they live down in Miami. Okay. And we talk, you know, about once a week. And yeah. they've got one new concept that they're working on that we were kind of spitballing on the other night. Great. Um, so we'll yeah. see. Miami, that's the place everyone goes once they get acquired, right? <laughs> I'm staying here, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm going to have a Tuscan villa. That's my plan. <laughs> I want a Tuscan villa, but I want, I, I literally want a condo like right outside of the yeah. office I'm in right now. That's nice. kind of my dream, yeah. right? Because why overcomplicate it, right? And the North Loop might be as expensive as Tuscany, so. I think it's probably more <laughs> at this point. We got to figure that one out, right? But I mean, but the spaces are beautiful, right? You, yep. you can't complain too much about it. So, right. yeah, no, I love, I love it. I love this story. I mean, it's, it's just really interesting to me too. I mean, one of the things that you commented on is I think a lot of people struggle with this that they feel like they need to do more with their life faster with mm -hmm. their life, right? We're pretty much the exact same age, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, you're a year younger than me. You graduated, and or no, you're a year older than me because you graduated in 2000. two thousand. I was yeah. in ninety nine. Sorry about that. You're a year older than yeah. me. I just pointed that I'm out. Wise, like a wizard. Jeez. <laughs> um, but you know, I I didn't figure anything out until I was probably 32. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's hard to. I think. Yeah. You know, your brain matures over time, and yeah. you have to do some things that you know you don't like, yeah. and then some things that you really love. And I think I was talking to someone earlier today about, um, you know, like if you could boil it down to like what you really love to do, what is it? Yeah. And you gotta, I think, find find that thing that you love to do, mm -hmm. and you can apply that many different ways. But it's important, I think, that you can kind of find that center. Yeah. And for me, it's building, and it sounds like you know you might be similar. I think we have a lot of similar wiring, so I'm glad that we met today, and I'm excited to just wrap this podcast up now, so we can actually sit down and just have a real conversation now. Cool. Right. So let's just keep that going. So. Um, but that was a great ending, right? So thank you for joining on the yeah. Founders Mentality. And uh, anybody listening, thanks for joining. Uh, we'll be back with another episode in just two weeks like we always are. So thanks again and, and have a great day. Bye.